Hi, welcome to the Beer Temple. This is Chris Quinn. Kind of a casual afternoon today. I uh, wasn't really planning on doing a show, but I uh, saw some beers in the fridge I wanted to drink and figured why not do a show about it. Um, just me today. Um, Mark Hunt around just wanted to do a show. Max is here though, and you may hear him snoring. In fact, I might even set up here. Sorry. Uh, getting the mic in place here. Um, so what do I have? Uh, Sam Adams every year does a homebrew contest. Uh, you may or may not know this. I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, I want to say at least, oof, man, I don't know, 10 years uh, or, or longer. Uh, one of the many cool things that Sam Adams does for craft beer in general, um, craft beer in America really was spawned by the homebrew movement in America. And we've talked about that a little bit in the past. So what is the long shot that Sam Adams does? Every year they have a homebrew competition where homebrewers are allowed to send in their beers to Sam Adams. I think some years Sam Adams will specify a category, like a style category um, that people can submit. Other years I think it's more open. Uh, judging from what they put out this year, I think it's a little more open. So people submit their homebrew, it kind of gets, makes its way up the ladder until eventually they, they crown uh, the winners, I believe, at the Great American Beer Fest in Denver every year. And it's usually one or two homebrews and then, that were submitted and then one from a Sam Adams employee. I think there's always one that's a Sam Adams employee. This year, in the past, it's always like some sort of like fruit wheat beer for some reason is the Sam Adams employee one. This year, uh, it's uh, a, 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 an alt, which we've never had on the show before, and I'm really pumped to, to try that. So uh, with that said, uh, we'll get going and, and taste through these beers. The way it works is, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't kind of finish it. So the winners then, um, get their beers, they get a production run of their beer using their recipe on uh, Sam Adams Brewery. They do a, a full run and it's d distributed uh, across the country. So um, it's cool, you get a six pack, you get two each of the three different varieties. So a lot of fun, uh, really worth it just to try the beers and also to kind of, you know, especially if you're a home brewer, you know, support support these these home brewers and support Sam Adams for supporting home brewers. Um, so with that said, we'll start with the first one. This is um, Durf's Secret Alt. Uh, by Fred Hessler. I'm fairly certain this is the, uh, like I mentioned before, the employee beer. Max is snoring. Um, and an alt is a hybrid beer. So in the past I've done shows about uh, Kolsch beers and uh, a Kolsch is a German ale lager hybrid. Uh, and an alt is the other German ale lager hybrid. All beers can be divided up into either an ale or a lager, uh, except these are the beers that kind of bore the lines. What happens is these are ales that they then lager. So they use ale yeast, they ferment it, uh, oftentimes at lower temperatures, uh, more conducive to a lager, sometimes at, at normal ale temperatures, but then they cold condition it for as as you would a lager. And the result is a little bit of a, a mix between an ale and a lager. You get a little bit more of the fruity character that you do in an ale, uh, a little bit more yeast driven beers, but you also get a nice clean flavor as well. So you get a little bit of those fruity esters, but they're very much tamed. So kind of cool. An alt beer is kind of the rival beer to the Kolsch beer. Kolsch is the the beer of the city of uh, Cologne, Germany, and Alt is right up the river from Cologne is Dusseldorf, and this is their beer. So I think I, I mentioned that in, in the past as well. So really nice, lovely looking beer. It's got that like crimson red highlight, brilliantly clear, really just like a, a looking into like a, a ruby or some sort of gemstone. Awesome, striking looking beer. A uh, little bit of an off-white, almost tan head, and uh, a good amount of uh, foam sitting there at the top. So I'm getting pretty much just kind of what I described you should get in an all. I'm getting a little bit of uh, fruit accentuating what is really just a nice full malt backbone. So. 
I'm getting almost like a, like a caramel taffy. Uh, uh, like one of those little like uh, candies that are just like little chunks of, of caramel. That's what this tastes like. And then on top of it, I'm getting a little bit of cherry uh, there and like a, a ripe cherry, uh, a sweet cherry. Oh, I know exactly what it is. Red Twizzler. That's exactly what this beer smells like. Yeah, it's like malt and then red Twizzlers uh, thrown in there on top. Wow, it, yeah, it smells like a red Twizzler. If Margo was here, she'd back me up. So now I'll, I'll take a sip and, the well, I'll take a sip first. Hmm, kind of tastes like a red Twizzler. I'm a black licorice guy, so. I prefer my licorice black. I like real licorice, not that red stuff. Um, not loving this beer. Uh, it, it, that Twizzler taste is, is definitely evident on the mouth. Uh, it was kind of cool that it smelled like that. I didn't really want it to taste that way, and unfortunately it kind of does. Uh, pretty highly carbonated. It's got a weird like, mm, like stony or like the bitterness is almost like a medicinal bitterness. I like uh, alts, which is what I was gonna say before I, I tasted this one. I like them to be quite bitter. Uh, that is uh, a hallmark to the Dusseldorf alt style, but it has to be a very clean bitterness. I like it to just be really very little hop flavor and just an attack of kind of really clean bitterness at the end of a lovely malt beer to really kind of want you to kind of grab another one and, and, and drink it. This one's a little bit too fruity for me. But it's decent, you know, it's a decent beer. Um, just not exactly what I'm looking for. It's a little bit sticky too, a little bit sweeter than I, I want. Um, I think it's because that lack of kind of a biting back end to help kind of clear off some of that sweetness. Um, but uh, decent. Oh, all these beers are, uh, I believe, $8.99 a six pack, so the, the normal Sam Adams pricing, which is great. And uh, they're all within a month old. So the best buy date is August and we're in uh, April now. So. Plenty of time for that. What am I going to uh, score this beer? Uh, I'm going to go uh, 88 with the beer. Uh, I'm going to go 87 with the beer. It's fine. It's just not really something. I'm just really not digging that that weird kind of Twizzler fruitiness to it. So. Unfortunate. What are you going to do? So, sorry, uh, Fred Hessler, but uh, don't quit your day job, which is brewing beer or doing something at Sam Adams. Uh, okay, this next one is the, oh, Five Crown Imperial Stout. I wanted to do it the other way. I'm, I am gonna do it the other way around. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is A Dark Night in Munich by Corey Martin. Uh, Corey is, you know, just a straight up home brewer. And uh, around the neck, it talks a little bit about it. Uh, it's a Munich style dunkel, which we've had on the show before. Um, amber, medium body brew, nice multi backbone, lager, slightly roasty. Um, shouldn't be roasty, but we'll see. Anyway. So what you want in a dunkel is not roasty. You want it to have a lot of rich malt, uh, maybe some toasty characters to it um, and caramel character, but it shouldn't get to that roast point. Then you're getting more into the black lager uh, realm, not to geek out too much. Another awesome looking beer. I mean, the, the two look very, very similar. Uh, wonderful, like dark crimson and red ruby highlights to this beer. Um, even more of a, a, f a fluffy head than the past, a little bit of kind of like a tan. Uh, head to it, so. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, the nose doesn't jump out of the glass, but Munich Dunkels can be a little bit more subtle than some other beers. 
I'm definitely getting malt. I'm getting a little bit of kind of that melanoidin uh, bread crust flavor to it. Uh, this is a lager, so you're not going to get any sort of fruit notes or anything like that, uh, which is the, the case here. And you're not really getting any uh, hop character either, which is also to style. I would just want a little bit more malt character jumping out at me. Um, you know, maybe as this beer warms, it will, you know, do that. So, so yeah, we'll give it a sip. Uh, what is beer? 5.9% alcohol, pretty much dead on for... Oh my goodness. Okay, I just noticed something. Okay. Uh, right on for a, uh, a dunkel. Uh, this alt is a 9.3% uh, alcohol, which is not normal alt. An imperial alt is a sticky alt. This is maybe a doppelstick alt, which is a double imperial alt. Um, but 9.3, no wonder it was like oh, fruity and crazy. Um, Okay, anyway, let's talk about this dunkel. Mm, you know what is warming up? I'm starting to get more of that nice um, toast, caramel, uh, not quite to, to biscuit, but it's starting to open up a little bit. First thing I think about when I drink this beer is how easy it goes down. Very well balanced. It's malt driven, but there's just enough bitterness in there to keep it from being cloying. It's got a nice creamy mouth feel, so there is some residual sugar in there. And it just kind of just goes down. You know, you're just drinking this beer, and the next thing you know, your mouth is empty and you're reaching for your glass again. It's kind of one of those beers, um, which is what. Uh, a dunkel should be you know you should be drinking out of a big stein something like that I like it um, it's not the most delicious dunkel I've ever had um, but that's not really fair is it um, it's a really solid beer <laughs> it's got a really nice malt character to it a little bit of that kind of bready dark bread character to it. Not quite rye bread, but you know, like a dark uh, bready character. A hint of uh, noble hop flavor in there as well. Just a hint you can barely pick up on. Um, I like it. Um, slightly spicy notes. Yeah, I can see that. Doughy, they call it a doughy character. Um, uh, from the yeast, I would say that's kind of from the malt. But whatever, they probably had a marketing guy write that. Um, but it's solid. Uh, I certainly like it more than the um, than the alt, the uh, double secret probation alt, and uh, the dark knight in Munich is solid. I'm gonna go uh, higher. I'm gonna give this guy a 90. I like it. So, last but hopefully not least is the Five Crown Imperial Stout, and I bought this. Um, not knowing that uh, fellow Chicagoan Joe Formanek, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, brewed it. So uh, a guy, um, I looked it up just kind of when I noticed it. What happened was Margaret said, Joe Formanek, that's the guy who's sending you emails, Chris. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it, it, he was. Um, I'm doing some judging for... Um, well, some homebrew competitions, and Joe is kind of help, helping kind of proctor it or steward it or oversee it. And uh, I've been emailing back and forth with Joe, not knowing he just won long shot, which is awesome. Joe, way to go. Uh, really proud. It's, it's just so cool. Um, partly because I think this is now two years in a row that a Chicagoan has won long shot. Last year, Rodney, oh man, I'm gonna get this wrong. Rodney K, I'll say, uh, won uh, long shot, a member of the Chicago Beer Society, which I am a member of, and that was actually his second time winning long shot, believe it or not, the only person ever to two-peat, as far as I know. Um, so yeah, I mean, keeping uh, homebrew going in Chicago. So way to go, Joe, look at this beer. So Russian Imperial Stout, pours like motor oil, that's something I really like, and it's, it, I don't really, 
Do you guys hear that? That's kind of awesome. Um, yeah, let me see if I can to mess with this again, see if we can just... Can you hear that at all? Can you hear that? Let's get one more. Whatever. Like, whatever, Chris. It's a snoring dog. We get it. He snores. Um, so, moving back to this, um, one thing I like in Russian Imperial Stouts uh, is just to watch it pour out of the bottle, and it, it just is like motor oil. I, I really like that. I dig it. I like watching those beers pour. Um, they're just so viscous, so big. Uh, this is an 8.9% beer. Actually less than the alt, but you can just see how much more viscous it is. Uh, very much to style. This thing is pretty much jet black. I'm trying to see if I can pick up any highlights and maybe just at the very, very edges I'm getting some really dark brown, but I mean for all intents and purposes, this is a black beer swirling it. I really can't see through it at all. And it's got that brown sugar, that like a light brown sugar colored, um, kind of like dark brown sugar uh, colored head. And it's actually got fairly good head retention. A lot of times with beers that have higher alcohol content, it's hard to keep a uh, head on those beers. So there you go. All right, so I'm getting um, obviously uh, chocolate and roast is, is primarily what you're getting, but I'm getting a little bit of a dried fruit character. What I often get, and a lot of people don't, um, so maybe I'm just kind of misinterpreting it um, or, or, or misclassifying it, is dried blueberry. I get that a lot in these big imperial stouts, and it's something that I kind of like. Um, yeah, it also has just a hint of umami in there. Not a lot, it's not like soy sauce, nowhere near that level, but a hint of kind of like a savory ca character to it. And uh, yeah, kind of chocolatey, and I do dig that little bit of a fruit note. What's it say on there? Chocolate notes, yet enough hot bitterness to balance out the sweetness. Working on this for a while, complex. All right. Mm. Okay, so there certainly is a little bit of hop bitterness to balance it out, just enough. It's certainly not a uh, a sweet beer. I mean, there's there's it's a big, very full-bodied beer that comes um, usually from residual sugars. Uh, it just kind of heft gives some heft to the beer. Uh, really kind of slick on my tongue, um, just kind of like rolling around in there and kind of just washing down very easily. My aftertaste now is a lot of like dark bitter chocolate. So I'm getting the chocolate from the roasted malts. You also pick up bitterness from those roasted malts as well. And also from hops. I mean, I'm sure this is a pretty aggressively hopped beer. It has to be with so much malt going on there. Uh, you pick up a little bit of that dried fruit note and you absolutely are getting that umami character as well. This reminds me quite a bit of Old Rasputin, uh, which is a lovely beer, one of my favorite go-to Russian Imperial Stouts. And you know what? I like this beer. Uh, I'm not just saying that. Um, because I'm probably going to be, you know, having to see Joe face to face in a little bit, but, um, but yeah, no, I do like the beer. Yeah, uh, pretty low carbonation and a definite alcoholic warming as well. So when, after I taste this beer, I notice that there's just a slight kind of glow in my mouth going on. I'm not really feeling the burn in the esophagus, anything like that, but just a little bit of an alcoholic warming in my mouth. Very much the style as well. These are big, big, big beers, these Russian Imperial Stouts. And um, it's good. You know, it's not the type of Russian Imperial Stout that a lot of kind of the beer geeks 
uh, need to have the bigger is better just these massive huge Russian Imperial stouts this is pretty much to style a Russian Imperial stout and I like it um, I said I liked it more than the alt which I gave a 92 I'm gonna go 91 with the Russian Imperial stout I think it's good and uh, my hat off to, hat goes off to Joe Formanek so there you go guys um, you know, everyone has their own palate, so please pick up the uh, long shot six pack from Sam Adams and let me know what you think. Um, you know, support homebrew. You know, that's that's where the brewers of tomorrow come from. How many times have I talked about a, a brewery that uh, I'm drinking on the show and, you know, I go through their bio a little bit and lo and behold, they started out as a home brewer, you know. So this is why the uh, American beer scene is the best beer scene in the world right now. It's because there's so so much homebrew, so much interest going on. Um, yeah, so support these guys and thank you for your support. Pretty good segue there. Um, keep the comments coming in. Thank you guys so much for all the love on iTunes as well. It really just blows me away. Um, and yeah, you shoot me an email, shoot me a tweet, anything like that. And uh, I love to hear from you guys. You, uh, those of you who have emailed me or wrote a comment know that. So, uh, and lest I forget, my good friend Castello, AKA Ed West, um, has not left me a rating or review, not through any fault of his own. Apparently there's, Apple doesn't like him, but I wanted to give him a shout out as well. Uh, he has been a long time viewer, has been really commenting and really giving me some great feedback since pretty much the, the, the start. And he asked me uh, for a shout out. So there you go, Costello. Uh, hope you like this episode. Uh, and I think I've got some upcoming episodes that you guys are really gonna dig. Uh, have some fun stuff coming up in the next two, three episodes. So until then, guys, I've got some awesome homebrew to drink, and hopefully you do too.